This is Mike Maloney, and uh, Mike is my gold expert. And the reason gold is so important, gold and silver, is because gold and silver is God's money. It's money made by God. And then in 1971, the U.S. government, under Tricky Dick, Nick, President Nixon, took God's money and turned it into man-made money. Never in the history of the world, this is the thing, never in the history of the world has this ever happened. In 1971, the U.S. and Nixon convinced the entire world to replace gold and silver with paper money. This stuff. Cash is trash. So the reason we have so much volatility in the world today is historically, since the time of the Romans and the Greeks and the French and the English and the Germans, every time they have taken God's money, like silver here, and replaced it with man-made money, there's been economic volatility. Now the problem is, so the dollar is going to keep dropping. So the one of the reasons I can predict what's going to happen is I can predict the dollar will keep dropping simply because the US government and now the euro, the European Central Banks, are printing so much of this trash. So you'll see gold going up in price, oil going up in price, real estate going up in price, because this is trash. So that's what happened in 1971, has happened throughout history. And the reason this current election doesn't make any difference is the only person that can put this back in place is a strong, charismatic leader. People like uh, Julius Caesar, Napoleon. That's why there were such great leaders, was they actually replaced this with this. Unfortunately, we do not have that person among the candidates. I know Ron Paul, philosophically, I agree with him as closely as possible, but unfortunately, I don't think Ron Paul has the chutzpah, as my Jewish friends would say, to change this whole thing. So there will be more this printed than ever before, which means the dollar keeps coming down and other things keep going up. And that's really what's going to happen. It's, it's predictable. And eventually, this will go to its true worth, zero. So all of you savers out there and people trying to save this trash, you're going to lose big time. With that, Mike Maloney. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kim was talking about the crystal ball, and Kelly was talking about cycles. And the way you make that crystal ball work is just reading economic history, because everything is just waves and cycles and waves and cycles this over has happened and over before, and over right? again. It's all happened before. In fact, the thing with the currency has literally happened hundreds of times, where they've gone to a from a... Uh, a an asset-backed currency. Currencies have been backed by oil, by gold and silver, by land. Uh, as soon as you remove something that you can't, something that puts uh, financial constraint on them, uh, where you can't just print as much of it as you want, the currency is pretty much doomed. Uh, there's been thousands of fiat currencies, and, and they back, all die. Yeah, back in the back in the Revolutionary War, the the U.S. government to fight the war printed a thing called the Continental. And that's why the saying is, as worthless as the continental. Yeah, not worth a continental. Not worth a continental. It, uh, it went to zero in a hyperinflation. Most people don't know that the U.S. has already been through a hyperinflation. And then uh, during the Civil War, uh, Lincoln came out with the greenback, and that's how he paid the troops, and it was competing with a gold-backed currency that was already in circulation. And we went through a huge inflation, where the dollar lost 66% of its purchasing power during this, the Civil War. So this has all happened before, and we're coming up on a convergence of a whole bunch of cycles. There's something called the Kondratiev wave that's this long, it's about the length of a human lifetime. And the last time the Kondratiev wave went into what's called the Kondratiev winter, that was the Great Depression. We're about, uh, we've actually started the Kondratiev winter back in about let, 2000. Yeah, let me back up what he, back what he's saying. Historically, throughout time, again, it's not crystal ball, it's called you know, prognostication. Every 75 years, there's a depression. The last depression was 1930. So we're right on it right now. Yeah. Now, again, the rich will get richer, and the poor and middle class will get wiped out, unfortunately. And with that, there's uh, another cycle that I call the currency cycle. And it's this pendulum that swings back and forth from uh, quality money to quantity currency and back to quality money. And it's gone on through the centuries since 407 AD when the first hyperinflation happened in Athens. 
And uh, I believe that we're on the precipice of this again. If the U.S. dollar has to go back to gold-backed, you're looking somewhere well north of $6,000 an ounce for gold. Somewhere, and it all depends. You have no idea how much currency they're going to print yeah, between now and then. How much is gold today? And gold today is 850, uh, yeah. uh, 865, something like that. And it just broke its, its 1980 record high and closed above uh, 850. For the, this is for the first time ever in history. That puts us in the second phase of this bull market. The first phase of any bull market is sort of a stealth phase where it's quiet accumulation. Then the second phase is usually the longest duration and the greatest growth. Uh, and then the final uh, third phase is the blow off top where the market just goes vertical. You remember the NASDAQ in the last three months of 1999. It just went vertical and the, the public, everybody rushed into it. And they all got slaughtered. The herd always comes rushing in at the end and they always get slaughtered. And that's the time you want to sell. You don't want to hold on to gold and silver forever. You want to hold on to it until a median price single family home costs less than 40 ounces of gold or less than 500 ounces of silver. And then you want to trade your gold and silver for real estate, cash flow real estate. Um, like I said, everything is waves and cycles. And the great news is that the greatest wealth is created in the shortest period of time when we're going back through these crises. From, uh, there was more wealth actually created for the rich, not for the average investor, but for the rich, like Joe Kennedy and Jesse Livermore, these stock market investors. They created more wealth for themselves from 1929 to 1932 than they did all throughout the 20s. You know, World War I and all the roaring 20s, the big stock market boom, they like doubled, tripled, quadrupled their wealth from 1929 to 1922 when the markets were crashing. Uh, the same thing it happened uh, from 1971 to 80 when uh, the market was going sideways. As a stock market investor, you weren't getting anywhere. Uh, there were a couple of real estate booms, but if you take the expansion of the money supply, real estate just kept up with the expansion of the money supply. So inflation really, your real estate in the 80s, 70s, I mean, was keeping up with inflation. But gold went up 24 times its price in nine years. And silver went up 39 times its price. If you had just 10% of your net worth, your entire net worth in gold, and you lost the other 90%, by 1980, you were 2.4 times richer than you were in 1971 with just 10%. So it's, it's huge wealth that's created in a very short period of time. So for 2008, you know, <clears throat> Robert called me a couple of weeks ago. He asked me where <laughs> I see gold going. I said down, and it. it it, it went way up instead. And the reason I said down was because uh, the European Central Bank had just created 350 billion euros. That's half a trillion dollars worth of euros. They had already inflated their currency supply 12% from, from January to September. On December 18th, they added another 4% to their currency supply in one day. So we're going, we're, the world is awash in paper money. It's a blizzard of paper money. And what's really interesting, if you study history, there comes a time where the public, the mass psyche of the country and the world, this time the world, before it's always been a country, that the mass psyche starts to sense the currency debasement. Everybody should be able to feel it now. You go to the grocery store, you go to the gas station, you can feel that there's a currency debasement going on. Everything's costing more. Your, your currency is losing purchasing power. And as the public starts to wake up, gold and silver go through the roof. And all that paper that they've created, gold and silver do an accounting periodically throughout history. It's really exciting to see this. They automatically revalue themselves when the public wakes up. And they catch up to all the currency that's been produced. And it, it is, there's this same tiny little pile of 2 billion ounces of gold that there was back in 1980. And the pile of silver has gone from 2.2 billion ounces to 300 million. Today, there's 8.3 times more gold available for investors to buy than there is silver. I want you guys that to hear what, I don't even hear what he just said, okay? It's, it, to me, I've been saying this for a number of years now, silver is the biggest opportunity I have ever seen, bigger than real estate, bigger than anything else. And silver, as we're talking today, 2008, is about $15 an ounce. Mm -hmm. There's less than 10 years supply worth of silver on planet Earth. The difference between gold and silver is gold is hoarded, silver is consumed. 
Silver is an industrial precious metal. It is used in cell phones, telephones, computers, electric lights, everywhere. The more information age we become, the more we use silver. And what, what uh, Michael is saying is that stockpile is at all-time lows, and they're not discovering much more. Poland has about 25% of the world's silver, so you know, you can buy real estate silver in Poland. You know, but anyway, so when people say, Mexico you, too. Yeah, am I, where am I investing? I say, I'm investing in the world. I say, what do you mean by that? He says, I'm investing in a metal that is consumed throughout the world. So I haven't, I, know I, buy, I buy a little gold, but I have been, you know, I've, I've been buying silver, Kim and I have been buying silver since it was about $4 an ounce. And we stockpile it, we buy ETFs, we buy anything we can in that stuff. And, we, and then, you know, it was, what, seven bucks? And then all of a sudden now it's 15, and we're just watching it. It is not crystal ball, you know? It is not about, you know, the stuff on television. It is pure supply, demand, economics, fundamentals. As I said, there's two billion people wanting the Western lifestyle. Two billion people wanting cell phones, computers, electricity, bikes, all of this stuff. So I look at it as $15 an ounce. Oh, that's, I think I'll wait. Well, I remember when it was 3 and 350 mm -hmm. then 370 then $4, and then I, I said, yep. the bottom had been hit, the thing is trending up. And it just keeps going. I bought it four dollars, and I got into the business of selling, selling uh, gold and silver just because I knew that the cycle had changed. Uh, I, I just want to say too. I was think it was interesting. We were in Poland. We were in Poland, and Robert's saying people are saying, "Well, what you know? What in, we're in Poland now, and real estate is really high." And and Robert's been talking about silver, and and Poland silver supply is like twenty to twenty-five percent of the world's silver is in Poland, and they're like, "Yeah, but." What should we invest in? <laughs> They're like silver. <laughs> yeah, but 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 what? I don't have what you know. What, what, silver? It was like it's right in front uh -huh. of them. A lot of times it's just right in front of them, but they just couldn't see it. That's one of the things uh, too. You, you can buy it and you can take it home. It can't go bankrupt on you. Uh, you can't Feels have a, a labor dispute or Enron accounting. It's just this super simple thing. You buy it now. You sit on it for five years. I don't know how long it's going to take, two years, five years, ten years. We could be going into a currency crisis right now. There was a trend line for gold where it was going up very smoothly and the price hit this trend line. It changed a little bit in 2005. I was hoping that we would drop back to the 750 area or so by February and touch this trend line. If we don't, we've established a new trend line that's extremely steep which would give us maybe $1,500 to $2,500 gold by the end of this year. And that says that we're beginning a, a currency crisis. Precious metals are the only investment class where their bull market can go from stage one to stage three, it, and it's called a currency crisis. And uh, you could see silver, I mean gold, anywhere from $5,000 to actually trillions, quadrillions, sextillions of dollars per ounce. It in 19 on how far the dollar and the euro yeah. and the loony and the Aussie dollar. They create them all now by doing this. They just type them into a computer, the dollars. They don't have to print them anymore. <laughs> it used to be that you had to mint coinage to expand the currency supply. Then you had to print paper to expand the currency supply. But now all you do is you add zeros to it. <laughs> just <laughs> and boom, you know, it's 10 times. They don't even have to print this trash anymore. Right. It's electronic. That is how fast it's going to hit people. If you can understand that, it is, that's why it's information age, not industrial age. And so all those, I feel, I feel for them hoping the government's going to pay, you know, like, who's going to win? You know, is it Hillary? Is it Obama? Is it Mitt Romney? I mean, it doesn't, they can't do a thing about this. It's too late. It doesn't matter. What matters is how smart you are now. If you think these guys are going to save your family, I think you're in for a sad, rude awakening. Because we've been here before. 1933, a man named Adolf Hitler was elected to Chancellor of, of Germany. The reason was because the Reichsmark, the Weimar government had printed too many of these Reichsmarks. Today, George Bush and Benack and those guys, they don't even have to print the stuff. And it's a global problem, not a German problem. 
and it has happened throughout history. Yeah. In 1919, at the end of World War I, uh, the, the uh, German mark, uh, the price of gold in Germany was 110 marks an ounce. Uh, by November 23rd of 1923, it was hundreds of trillions, and a single silver dollar was $1.6 trillion. Uh, Mark. and Trillion marks, yes. Uh, and when gold was just going vertical in the midst of their hyperinflation, where people's... What, uh, what, what year was this again? This was 23. It was November of 23 when we finally, when they finally went into the end, the death throes of the This is mark. the German economy. Yeah. Uh, the final week of that hyperinflation, and this is when fear is gripping the nation. The middle class has been wiped out. Uh, the, the value of the currency is changing on a daily basis. Things are two, three, four times more expensive tomorrow than they were today. It's said that uh, you could drink a bottle of wine at dinner, and the following day the empty bottle, the deposit for it, was worth more than the bottle of wine. There were accounts in 1919 you could retire on 50,000 marks. By 1923, they closed the accounts and didn't even bother sending you the money back because a postage stamp was more than 50. It was several hundred uh, thousand marks. Uh, in the final week of uh, November of, of uh, 1919, when they were in the midst of this currency crisis, that's when Hitler gave his beer hall push, where he, that's where he made his name. That's where the public first recognized him. And it wouldn't have well, been possible for him to come to power if, if they didn't have that fear to play on. Throughout history, the only thing that brings stability back into the currency is a strong, charismatic leader. I'm afraid Ron Paul is not our boy. <laughs> you know, he ain't going to do it. Right. I don't think Hillary can do it's it. It's a shame. I don't think too. Obama can do it. I don't think Romney can do it because this is beyond the borders of this country. And the middle class will probably be wiped out in America. So here's what I'm betting on for 2008 whoever becomes president is going to continue the deficit spending. They're going to continue. We, this whole generation right now are like a whole bunch of children. They just want it right now, and they spend every, you know, and charge up the credit cards. Uh, you know, when, when you buy a home or sign a credit card name, you're expanding the currency supply of the United States. The bank didn't loan you any dollars. Those dollars are just a book entry that they add. It's part of fractional reserve banking. When somebody gets foreclosed on, when they file bankruptcy, uh, those dollars that were created magically go poof back into money heaven and the currency supply contracts. I think somewhere on this big inflation we're going to have one hyper, uh, one deflation that, uh, that should, it'll, it'll wipe out uh, people that are too highly leveraged that don't have any gold or silver. Or uh, cash flow. Yeah, so I think during this cycle the savers are going to be wiped out the spenders are going to be wiped out. It's the people that have balanced arcs. If you read Rich Dad's Prophecy, and Robert talks about building an arc in there, you've got to have a balanced arc. He talks about uh, having cargo in, in your hold that's balanced. And if you've got something that's going to, to perform well, I don't think we're going to have a defl deflation for very long. It would be very short-lived. Ben Bernanke would just uh, hit the accelerator on the printing press, you know, floor it, well, the, and, and it, try and, and get us... And the European Central Banks already yes. prove yeah. they're going to flood the market with this. Those are fake million dollar yeah. bills and they're going to be reality. Well, aren't you here? They've already proved, they've already shown their hand. They've already played their hand. Yeah. They're going to not, they're not even going to print this. It's just going to flood with this. So you're going to see this crash and then inflation like we've never seen before. So it really works for us is because we just click collecting that rent, but then we can pay off those deadbeat loans of ours <laughs> with cheap money. That is the, that is the strategy. In 1980, it took 1,000 ounces of gold to buy a single family, uh, silver, to buy a single family median price home in the United States, and silver was not rare then. When you measure things with gold and silver, there is no inflation. Everything just travels inside of a valuation channel going from overvalued to undervalued to overvalued to undervalued. That day will come again, but it's probably going to be less than 500 ounces. You want to buy a single-family median-price home outright, no payments, no down payment, 100% cash flow, put $8,000 aside today. <laughs> You're going to be able to do it in the in future. Silver. It's just history repeating. In silver. Silver, I'm don't, sorry. Don't silver. hold cash. Right. 
Cash Gold is good too, but it won't perform as well. Is trash. Exactly. Repeat after me. Cash, Cash is trash. trash. If you understand that one, your whole paradigm will shift. So what's the good news? <laughs> <laughs> the, the good news is I believe I believe you're going to be able to buy a home for eight thousand dollars if you set that money aside in real money, not currency. And people need to learn the difference. When the public can discern the difference between currency and money, wait, wait, that's this is, when this is over with. This is God's made money. money. And this is man made Cur money. Currency. Hillary, a currency. And if Hillary gets elected, it's woman made money. Then at that point, you know. <laughs> so. But, you're, you're you know, we have a Republican president. We're going to spend more deficit spending on war. We have a Democratic president. We're going to do more deficit spending on social programs. It doesn't matter. They're going to expand the currency supply. And don't believe what those Republicans say. They say, you know, the, the Democrats tax and spend. The reality is what Michael is saying, Republicans borrow and spend. Mm -hmm. But eventually it goes back to taxes. We all be taxed for these bills, right? Exactly. So are you optimistic about 08? Absolutely. Yep. Not for uh, the middle class or the general economy. The people that lack financial ed education, that aren't building their arts, they're uh, in some serious trouble. Serious trouble. Thank you. Are you optimistic about 08? I, I am pulsatingly optimistic about 08 because I think as an individual, I, I want to move, and, I, and all the stuff that Michael's talking about, I make sure I know a lot about it. I think 08 is a wealth-changing year for me personally, so I'm very excited. Thank you. You excited about 2008? I'm very excited about 2008. I'm actually excited about 2009 and 2010 yeah. because I think it's still going to keep that cycle going. I think we're just at the start right now. And this again, I mean, when I started in 1987, we were still we were at a turn right then. The market had just turned then, and that's what I see happening now. So I think it's the best time to get educated and get started, right. and and really truly build your build your wealth and change your thinking. This is trash. This doesn't even exist. That's why we have the subprime mess. It's not those guys with the subprime loans. It started back in 1971, and it's been repeated throughout history. You excited about 08? Oh, yeah, for sure, because uh, obviously it's going to be our biggest year ever, uh, we, we predict. We're, we're already seeing money coming in uh, for our properties from Canada and from Hong Kong. And because we're, what are people going to do when they can't buy homes? They're, they're going to defer into rentals. So for our business, uh, the apartment class, versus all real estate classes is actually predicted to be right. the best over the next five years. My friend was at a conference in Las Vegas and it said the smart money today is in apartment houses and mobile home parks. So that means we're geniuses. Yeah. <laughs> and Hang on long enough, we become geniuses. Yeah, long eventually. So in closing, I'll just tell you what I do. Uh, I don't recommend, don't do this at home. When I say cash is trash, Kim, do we have any cash? We almost never have Cash. We're always We're broke. Al it's, it's always moving. It's always invested. So when a deal comes up, we scramble like crazy to go find the funding for it. And the reason for that is as soon as this stuff hits my hand, I'm either putting it in, into some doodad like my new Lamborghini or I'm putting it into something that has the possibility of surviving a currency crash. So Kim and I never have any cash. We're always moving the stuff out of our hands. We are technically broke, but we're not in debt. There is a very big difference. We have hundreds of acres of land right along the path of growth. We have apartment houses. We have gold, silver, oil, stocks. And I think the stock market today is the best. The more it goes down, the more people get upset, the more money I move in there. But it goes back to when I saw silver at around 375 an ounce, and it ticked up, ticked up, ticked up. I said, okay, it's going to go back up. And back then, Kim and I had no money. All of our trash went into silver and gold and all that. Say, so am I buying silver and gold today? No. My position is now set. Does that make sense to you? I'm now, we're now in position. We'll, we'll let the thing run, as Michael says. We'll just watch it, watch it, watch it. And just before it blows, when the suckers come, when the, the other investors come moving into the market, we move it out. Yep. That is our play. But we buy things of value. So the thing we're moving our stock money money into is bulk shipping companies. You know, people that are shipping the grain because the dollars drop, shipping grain to Pakistan and India and all that stuff. We're killing it. We're making so much money in that stuff. 
You know, people say the Dow was going down, but the Dow was only 30 stocks. Right. And the Wilshire 500 is 500 stocks. Well, we're not buying any of those things. We're buying companies that just pay dividends and are solid businesses, just like an apartment house. Not sexy, not fun, not exciting, but very fundamental. So I am extremely excited about the future. The franchising thing is chugging along. Everything is going great. Cash is coming in, and we take this cash and get rid of it as soon as we can. I don't recommend it, but that's what we do. Thank you very much. Have a great 2008.